Hello, my name is Gary Chillingworth and I'm one of the writers and reviewers for Air Gunner magazine. As we move into the 21st century, or to be perfectly honest, we've probably been there for a while, um, we're going to be producing more digital content. Um, these series of videos that I'm going to be doing are going to be running in conjunction with articles I write within Air Gunner magazine. Now, usually the series that I do has a name. In the past, I've done Beginners to Winners, um, we've done Blast in the Past, Young Guns, and, and a few other uh, a series we've done. So we need a name for this series. We're going to be looking at everything from HFT, we're going to try and do a bit of FT, back garden plinking, whatever we can do and whatever you want us to do. So I did ask the family for a suggestion for a few names. So first of all, let me just check. Right, from my son Jacob, fat man with a rifle, fat man with a pistol, Fat man without a clue. No, okay, right. So they're not particularly good from my son, Jacob. Okay, from the wife. Gary, please don't get me involved. Yeah, okay. Right, so if you've got any ideas what you would like this series to be, not fat man with a rifle, make a comment in the uh, comments below and we'll see what we get. So we're going to go on today. We're going to look at uh, propulsion systems uh, with rifles. So we're going to look at electronic um, we're going to look at PCP, CO2 and spring, um, also gas ram. We're going to start with Airsoft. Now, I'm aware we're Air Gunner magazine and uh, Airsoft isn't really within our purview. But the reason I'm going to look at Airsoft is a lot of people at the moment are within lockdown and shooting in gardens can be very, very difficult. Also, some councils and private landlords don't like you to shoot air gun pellets and things like that in your garden. Whereas Airsoft, because it's in a bit of a gray area, that is something some people can use. Now an Airsoft rifle is something like this. Now this is my L1A1 SLR. Shoots a plastic BB. It's non-lethal. Magazine system. See if we can get it in. And you can get a fair bit of accuracy with it. Um, you can't knock over a metal target, but you can punch paper. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, the level of accuracy that you'll get with something this isn't what an, uh, a proper air gun shooter really wants. But if you've got youngsters in the house and you want to teach them how to shoot using something like this, which is non-lethal, is a perfect platform. Trigger control, sight alignment. This one has peep sights, front and rear. So you're able to look through, able to shoot, and it's perfectly safe. Now, one thing I will say is all of these rifles here, we've been checked beforehand and they're all unloaded, degassed. Well, not degassed, the PCPs have gas in them, but they are all safe. So we've checked all that beforehand. These are electric. Let's say they run on plastic BBs. Are they air guns? I'm not sure. But what they are very good at is teaching great trigger control. And if you're shooting in your garden during the lockdown, you will have a lot of fun with these. Okay, next on our list is CO2. Now, CO2 is a bit of a funny old Hector. Um, will you shoot HFT with it? No. Will you shoot FT with it? Probably not. Um, CO2 is affected by cold temperature and there aren't that many high-end target rifles that run on CO2. There is the CR20 from Hamley. Um, this is the AR20, this is a PCP, but the CR20 is essentially the same rifle, but it runs on CO2. This one obviously runs on compressed air. Now, as I said, CO2 it's not particularly great in cold tire, sorry, in cold weather, in hot weather. You can get accuracy with it. Rifles like the CR20 and the 850 Air Magnum are accurate, certainly out to 30, 35 yards. But what CO2 is brilliant at, and it's fantastic at, is being fun. This is an Umarex Lever Action Cowboy Rifle. Now that is better than cocking something like an S400. 
this rifle doesn't have a pellet tray that you put a pellet in it has cartridges like this and what you do is you load the bb because this is actually designed to run on steel bbs in 177 in the back then you load these into the loading port so close the action load these into the loading port like that and then when it's time to fire you cock it back rounds in into the chamber there's no gas in it fire and this is the fun part fire and it makes you feel like john wayne these rifles this isn't wood it's some kind of resin plastic so that means it doesn't take a lot of maintenance accuracy uh i was banging targets at 30 yards um i would like to demonstrate it but to be honest with you i was so excited when i got it the first thing i did was load it up and use up the very small supply of 177 bbs that i had now just fire that off now now as i said this is a bb rifle it's not designed to take pellets however if you look online, there is much anecdotal evidence that these rifles work very, very well with the 177. Now, I am not recommending you do this. It will invalidate your warranty, but a lot of people do. Now, there is a, an issue with steel BBs. If you are shooting paper with a proper backstop, they are absolutely great. And they're cheap. You can buy 1,500 steel BBs for about seven pounds. However, if you are shooting a metal target, like an HFT target, something like this, steel on steel, that's still wet, steel on steel, that will ricochet. And what you don't want in a garden, in a small garden, is a ricochet. So the thing to remember with rifles like this to shoot steel BBs is your ricochet risk. CO2 is great value. They run on these little CO2 caplets. These are about 15 pounds for 20. They load in the back. This one particularly takes two at a time. But the guns are cheap. This one's about 250 pounds. Um, you can get them cheaper, you can get them more expensive. But they're easy to cock, they're easy to maintain, they're great fun, and I love this rifle. And we are going to do a proper in-depth review of this Umarex Cowboy Lever Action Rifle. Okay, next we'd like to look at gas ram. Now, for those of you who don't know what a gas ram rifle is, essentially, this is a gas ram syringe. It's got a plastic thing, hasn't got a needle. What a lot of people ask is, what does a gas ram do? Now, before we get into this, I've not studied physics for 35 years. So if I get this wrong, please don't write to me and tell me you got it wrong. Put it in the comments below and I will admit that I'm an idiot. You know I'm an idiot. I know I'm an idiot. My editor knows I'm an idiot. And if you want really complicated stuff, speak to Jim Tyler. The man has the brain the size of a planet. Right, so here, the air within this tube is at normal atmosphere. If you push it in and out, not an issue. If you block the air, that's your gas ram, push to the top and you start pushing down, you're compressing the air. This is compressive energy or elastic energy. That is now also potential energy. I think it's called elastic potential energy. So basically when you pull the trigger, this pops up, that's the ram, pushes the piston down the compression tube and air comes out. So essentially that's what a gas ram is. Also similar to the gas strut you've probably got in the boot of your car. Now, I don't actually have a gas ram here. A good friend of mine offered to lend me one, but because we're in lockdown, I couldn't justify it legally and morally to go around and pick it up. So if you want to have a look at gas rams, we will look at gas rams in the future. Gas rams are like the HW90, the Theoban Elan, Gamo are making some really interesting ones. The other, the, right, the main advantage with the gas ram is apparently they are bulletproof. 
they just don't go wrong. The negatives also actually that they're meant to be they're quite snappy and they've got a fast lock time so they're meant to be relatively easy to shoot and to cock unlike springers though like this one here my tx you can't really tune them as much as you can with a spring rifle and i think that is why spring rifles over the years have gained more popularity than gas rams because with a spring rifle you can change the spring you can well, we'll go on to spring rifles in a minute, but essentially gas rams and spring rifles are the same thing. You're compressing a spring, you're compressing a ram, it's locking in place, you're pulling the trigger, the ram or the spring expands. That pushes the piston down the compression tube, which creates volume of air, which pushes down the barrel and that pushes a pellet and you hopefully knock over the target. So that's gas rams. And now we'll move on to springers. This is my TX200 Hunter Carbine. Now, it's not in a standard stock. This is a Lucas Parsley LP Tac 2. Also, as you can see at the front, we have a muzzle weight. Not particularly attractive muzzle weight, but that's a muzzle weight. We have an Optisand CP 10 by 32 scope. And inside we have a uprated piston, a 22 millimeter piston, uh, which is an aftermarket piston. Some people will tell you that springers are not as accurate as PCPs. This rifle will put 10 shots inside a five pence piece at 45 yards every day of the week. I also believe that spring guns take less wind than PCPs. Why do I love spring guns? Well, spring guns, <sighs> when you shoot a PCP, they're very dead. They're superb at what they do. They're fantastic. But when you shoot one of these things, it talks to you, it recoils. If you grip it too hard on one side, the pellet will go to the right or to the left or up or down. You need to be in tune with the rifle. Also, they're ultimately adjustable. Um, you can change the springs, you can change the pistons, you can change the load and the preload. The whole community of Springer shooters is all designed about helping each other and getting the most out of these wonderful pieces of machinery. I shoot these at home all the time and I just have so much fun. Now, cocking a spring rifle, if you're gonna shoot 30 or 40, 50, 100 shots a day, can be difficult. You do get a bit of strain in your neck, a bit of strain in your back, but it's something you get used to over the years, but it's something you need to be aware of when you're buying a, when you're buying a spring rifle. Um, I love this rifle. Um, springers, they've become part of my life. Spring is the thing. Go buy yourself a Springer. You'll never regret it. And if you do regret it, send me an email and I'll tell you why you're wrong. Buy a spring gun. And this brings us finally on to pre-charged pneumatics, more commonly known as PCPs. This is the HW100, or 100. This is, in my opinion, one of the best rifles on the market today. It is a superb hunter and it is a superb target shooter. Um, target shooters like Simon Vant used an HW100 to take many national wins over the years. Um, they're great. They'll put 10 shots inside of a five pence piece at 45, 50 yards every day of the week. And also this one is fitted with a silencer. And if you're shooting at home in the garden, and you don't want to draw attention to yourself, that is only slightly louder than a flatulent sparrow. This is the KT version. It has the adjustable cheek piece, the adjustable butt pad, and this is a 3D printed hamster. I don't know why they're called hamsters. Um, if you know, let me know, and I will let everybody know. PCP works by filling up this. This is the main air reservoir usually up to around about 200 bar now this particular rifle has a regulator or as they call it an air metering system what that does is there is a second chamber within the rifle air comes from there fills the chamber to a specific pressure and then when you fire it then the air doesn't come from here it comes from the second reservoir and goes out now that apparently increases shot count and level of consistency. 
be honest with you, I've owned regulated rifles and non-regulated rifles. Rifles like the Air Arms S400, uh, which uses the knock open valve, is so good these days, I've not made, noticed a difference over the chronograph. So don't get bogged down about regulators. They're nice to have, but they're not essential. The only difference is I can fill this to 200 bar and it will be consistent down to 110. Whereas something like the S400, you can fill to 180, shoot it down to 110, and that's within its sweet spot. If you fill it above 180, you may notice a slight increase in velocity through a, through a chronograph, or if you drop below 110, uh, again, a, a, a drop off in power. And that's the difference between a regulated and a non-regulated rifle. Now, the thing to remember when you walk into your gun shop to buy a PCP is this is not all you need. You will need a scuba tank in 300 bar, preferably. You can get 232s, but always go for a 300 bar. And they come in either a 3 litre, 5 litre, 7 litre, 12 litre. And you'll need a charging gauge, which is what sits on top of the tank. We'll do another video on tanks later in the day. You can also buy a pump but they take a fair amount of effort to use, so that's something to be aware of. PCPs. The vast majority of people who shoot in competition use a PCP. People who shoot in bench rest shoot PCPs. People who shoot in FTs shoot PCPs. PCPs are amazing. They are easy to shoot. They are deadly accurate. They are wonderful pieces of engineering. I like spring guns, but I have ultimate respect for the PCP. Um, the HW100 is fantastic. Um, I love Air Arms, BSA, any of your top manufacturers will give you a quality rifle. The thing to remember when buying a PCP is get to a gun shop and hold it in your hands. These rifles for me are absolutely perfect. I've got the adjustable cheek piece, I've got the hamster, and that just sits there absolutely wonderfully, standing. However, this rifle, when I'm laying on the ground, I have to adjust because it's quite short. My main competition PCP is an HFT 500, which is longer. That's better for me. Other people I know, going like Simon Vance, uses one of the, or used one of these, destroyed the world. So, PCPs, absolutely fantastic. Spring guns, you know it makes sense. If there's anything else we haven't covered, catapults, whatever, let me know and we'll try and boot that in a future video. Okay, so we've had quite a bit of fun today. We've looked at many different rifles, many different things from CO2s, gas rams, airsoft, PCPs and springers. Um, hopefully I've been informative. Um, if there is anything you want me to look at, please drop me an email at garychillingworth36 at gmail.com. Um, any ideas for future videos, I'm more than happy to listen and to hear from what you say. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.